Welcome back to our Beatrice YouTube channel. In today's class, we learn how to make this beautiful rubber bust Victorian corset. So it has a basque effect and the waistline, and it's very simple to make. If this is what you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. So to draft this Victorian corset or rubber bust corset. I already drafted this pattern so this is just a simple basic bodies with shoulder and waist bust that so the shoulder the bust that air uh, was transferred to the shoulder so this is the original pattern and I've done this severally on the channel so if you don't know how to do it you may want to check out the fab the pattern I have on my basic bodies everything is stated there so the only difference is just the that leg in this case I extended this one one inch that leg all the way to the M line which is the hip line as you can see you can see that we just closed this here two inches before the hip line but in this case I just took the one one inch that because I took it out of one one inch on the under bust on the waistline and then I extended it to the lower part also so whatever shortage that I may have here I've added it back to the side so now we have this pattern now the next thing is for us to start drafting so the first thing i'm going to do now is to connect this that's to know the height of my the shape that this part this upper part of my corset is going to take so to know this now i'm just going to like i normally do if you watch most of my videos i'm going to take the difference between my bust point so the first thing is to note your bust point which is here okay so after putting my bust points now i'm going to be taking the difference between my bust points and my under bust and as you can see we have three and half inches there so now the three and half inches i'm going to take my pencil because normally we should use a pencil to draft so that if you make any mistake you can easily correct it but because this is a tutorial and for us to see it well that is why i'm using marker so i'm just going to use this and this that i'm drafting is really not part of the tutorial i just want to use it as a guide to shape my neckline so i'm just going to be using a pencil then i'll clean it off later so now i'm just taking the three and half inches round like that then i'll circle it so i already did that i'm just going to make the circle border so that we can see it okay on this side and then on this side so after that now you can decide how deep you want this corset to be so for me around nine inches is okay from the upper part so here now I can, or you can just use your bust point as a guide so you can just do one inch above your bust point so this is the bust point here and the bust point i work with here is 10 inches so one inch above the bust point is still the nine inches that i intend to use so if you measure one inch above your bust point you have something like this so let me use marker for this okay so what i'm doing now is kind of connecting my bust my co connecting my over bust shape so this this or uh, this neckline is going to be a sweetheart neckline so what i'm going to do now is to connect this from that point to my that leg here and then i already have that shape to guide me okay so i have this here and then because this is going to be a tube so we are not going to be having any ham hole area here so on this side also i'm just going to blend in what i have here from where my dad legs up because this has to be equal because we are still going to sew it back so now here i'm just going to look for a smooth curve now and then just blend this in okay so after blending it in i don't want any sharp edge so i'm just going to blend everything out so that it will look really nice there so that is what i'm trying to do here okay so i have my over four bust corset like that and that is what the shape is going to look like so if you're going to be adding a yoke to this this upper part here becomes our yoke so you just need to close this part now and when you close it let me just try to close it so that we'll see what i'm talking about so once you close this you can see that the lines matches so this part here that you see you cut it out and that becomes your yoke but we we'll still leave that now and go over to start drafting our corset 
so because this is a Victorian corset the major difference that we have from the regular corset that we do is that Victorian corset normally have various darts so you can ask as you can have as many darts as you want actually but I'm just going to be having like two darts on this so i have this one then i'm going to create another one on the side pattern so to create this that now on my waistline i'm going to measure what i have there so i have six inches there and then i'm going to divide that into two so that's going to give me three inches so the three inches that i have there i'm going to connect make it into a straight line so let me just use the pencil for this first i can decide to just make my straight line from my m line here upwards like this if that is what you want or you can just try to tint it towards your ample area okay so that it will be a bit bent then you have something going in this direction so it depends on what you want but i'm just going to be maintaining this straight line so i'll just make it bolder there okay so now we have another that line there so the next thing now is to start taking our darts from the waistline so now this depends entirely on what you're aiming to do so i'll be using this opportunity to teach us how to change our waist okay so now on this part you may, depending on how how if you want you know if you normally want to cinch your waist what you are aiming to achieve is that our glass shape and to do this you need to reduce your waist measurement so that it will force the waist to compress so that that shape can come out but in doing this also you have to be very careful because at the same time you don't want this to be too uncomfortable for the person that is going to wear it so every in everything you're doing you have to make it moderate so the that the that the one one inch that that we took here has already been added back because that is our actual pattern so whatever that that i start to take from here now is me section the waist which means i'm trying to reduce the size of the waist so that by the time the person is wearing it and they are lacing the corset the waist will be going inwards then that shape that you're aiming to get will come out so now if i decide to take half half inch on both sides for this it means i've taken out one inch from my waist so and remember this is on fold so it means on one side of the center front i'm taking out one inch and then on the other side of the center front i'm kicking out another one inch that is minus two inch from my waist so if i intend to do this for the back also you can imagine how much i've taken out so if you're not okay with that if you think that is too much you can decide to add back this one inch on the sides or you can just take half half inch okay you can just take half half okay so in this case i'm just going to be taking two quarter of an inch that's 0.25 from each side okay because i don't want it too much so i'm taking 0.25 from here and then i'm taking 0.25 from here also which means i've taken out half inch half an inch 0.25 from across 0.25 is half an inch and then i'm going to connect that okay Okay, so i've taken that out now and then again i want to further cinch this with that was why i decided not to take full half inch here on this each of these that leg now i'm going to be taking another 0.25 on both legs of these that so here now on the waistline i'm going to take 0.25 here also and then on this side again i'm going to take another 0.25 okay and then I'm going to connect this to the under bust like this and then to two inches before my hip line so the same thing here now I'll connect this and this so now I've taken a total of one inch 0.25 plus 0.25 here is half an inch 0.25 plus 0.25 here is also half an inch so this is a total of one inch okay so i'm also on the center front here i want to have like that inside effect like you know how that center front will just go in like that so for that give you that our glass shape so i'm going to take another that there which means that my center front is going to be divided into two pieces so here now i'll take another 0.25 
okay instead of 0.25 you can take half an inch like i said but this entirely depends on the style that you want to get and what your customer can take okay so if your customer can want really wants that shin shin and you know it's not be too uncomfortable for the person you can do half half inch instead of the 0.25 that i'm doing here so now i have successfully taken out one and half from this half of the center frame. remember this is just half scale of the center half of the front bodies we'll have another half on this side so i've taken one and a half that's half half one plus 0 0.25 okay it's not up to open uh, one and a half i take i took half here i took half for this two also that's one then 1.25 so if you multiply that by two for the other side of the front that's going to give you just two and a half inches so i've taken out two and a half inches from the okay so now i've taken out two and a half inches from the front like i was saying if you want to take more from the back also you can do it and like i was saying assuming i was taking out half half inch for, for each of these that is means i would have taken out half half for this that is one half half for this that is two then half for this that is half that's two and a half then multiply by the other half that i'm going to have for the front that would have been five inches and there is likely that will take for the back again that's going to be too much so let's say your waist is around 30 inches then if i'm taking five inches from the front that's 25 inches already which i feel is too much so that is why i did this and if you don't want to shrink your waist and you have taken this that another thing you can do is whatever that that you have taken here you can just go to the side and then hide it back but because of the waist shrinking that we're doing here i'm just going to leave it as it is now and then i'm going to work on the lower part so depending on what you want if you want it to be like this you can leave it that like that but if you want it to have that kind of back effect so from the waistline here i'm just going to go so now you can from your waistline you can go down by four inches or five inches depending on how deep you want that effect to be so here i'm just going to be going down by maybe four and a half inch and then from there now i'm going to connect it so you can either connect it in a straight form that is going to be sharp like this or just use the slantly curved part of your ruler so i'm just going to connect it like this to give me that basque effect that i want then i'll cut out this front piece okay so for your Victorian corset you may have so many dart lines it doesn't have to be just this what you just need to do is to keep dividing so if you want more pieces you just make sure what you have here divide this by two then you can have another dart line here also here if you want more you can just make sure what you have here divide it by two and then you have another dart line here but let me just shade out what i'm going to cut out so that you will not be confused so all these shaded parts that i'm shading they are all going off okay on the center front also i'll be cutting this off and then on this side also i'll be taking out these darts okay so now we're going to cut this and then like i said if you're going to be using a yoke for this this upper part just becomes your yoke and to do this you just need to close these darts so you close the darts that you have here and then you take your scissors now and then you cut this out so using your masking tape you just need to hold that place together okay okay so this becomes your this becomes your yoke you just need to hold this place together now and then you cut out your neck point so sorry we have this now as our yoke and close this so i'm just going to set this aside because this is not going to be having any yoke and then i'm going to cut out what i have here so remember this basque effect that we created this is actually not compulsory if you want it's fine and then this now is my actual pattern so i'm just going to be cutting this half now but before i cut it off because this is going to be in smaller pieces and they may look like each other they may resemble each other so i'm just going to be labeling this the center front i label this the middle front 
and then I'll label the side front so that by the time I cut it, I'll not be confused. And then here on the lower part here, you may want to put like an arrow there so that it will show you that this is the lower part. Then on the side front here also, because they may look like each other, I'm going to indicate that this point is the part that I'm going to be sewing to the middle front so that I don't get confused. So I'm going to cut this house now okay so this is our pattern now for the front and if you're going to be adding a yoke to this so this is what your yoke is going to look like so by the time you join it together you have this and then you just had your yoke like this okay so now we've set this aside now and work on the back okay so for the back it's quite simple we have a regular back panel like this and then we have our normal that so i did this in pencil because I don't want to maintain this that so i have a one inch that here already and then the one inch that i have here i already had this back to this side so i don't have any shortage on this and i've not done any shinting on this so far but bear in mind that for our front bodies we already took out two and a half from the total waist measurement so whatever it is that you want to do on the back you should bear that in mind so now I can decide to maintain the dart that I have here and then create another dart on the side here by just dividing what I have here by two. But I just want something uniform. So instead, I'm going to be cleaning up this dart. Then I'll measure what I have here on my waist and then I'm going to divide it by three so that I can have three equal halves. So I've cleaned up this dart now. And then what I'm going to do now is to measure what I have here and then i'm going to divide it by three so i have around 10 inches here so the 10 inches divided by three is going to give me around 3.3 .3. so i'm just going to mark that like that and then i will make them into a straight line but before i do that i'm going to shape my neckline first so what i'm just going to do now is just to have like a v shape on this neckline and then i'm going to measure the depth that i want usually is usually low so here i'm going to measure like 11 10 or nine and a half inches i went down by 10 for the front so by nine for the front i'm just going to be doing 10 inches for the back and then from there i'm just going to connect it straight down to my ham hole line okay you can see what i have there so if this is not low enough for you you can just go down by maybe another one inch and then you take your ruler and then connect it to your armhole line like this so i think this is fine for me so now i'll connect this dart that i have divided and then i'm going to make it a straight line up to where my neckline stops okay so this is the second one i'm just going to confirm what i have there okay and then i'll make it into a straight line also okay so here now remember that i have one inch that that is not a shortage so this that now i can decide to take half half here one half half here one which means if i'm taking this other half half that i'm taking now is not part of my main bodies so this is me changing the waist also or i can just add it back or instead of taking half half the one inch that i have there i can just do quarter of an inch quarter of an inch which is half quarter of an inch quarter of an inch which is half which means this is a total of one again and i'm not taking anything so the only thing that i've done is what i have done in front which is minus two and half inches so the actual waist that i'm working with is 30 inches like i said and i don't want this to be too much okay so the two and a half inches that i've taken in front minus that 30 inches is going to give me around 27 and a half so i've reduced the waist successfully to 27 and a half which is fine for me so now i'm not going to be taking anything at the back so the one inch that i have that is already in my pattern is what i'll be sharing for this that at the back which is fine for me so if you think you can or maybe i can just add maybe a half half an inch here so that it will be a quarter of an inch so if i had quarter of an inch here on both sides it's going to be half an inch and if i had a half to what i have taken at the front it's going to give me a total of three which is still fine for me so now here i'm just going to be doing a quarter of an inch of an inch each on both sides and then here also i'm going to be doing a quarter of an inch and then i'm going to make that into 
my new that so connect these two inches before your hip line and then connect this back so that's the first that and then i'm going to do this for the second that also so with this now i've not taken anything from my back i have half inch here half inch here which is a total of one inch and which is what i have taken which is what i have cleaned off here which was already added to my tan to my pattern already so if i want to take anything extra here i can just do half a, three, uh, a, quarter, a quarter of an inch at this center back also here and then connect it and then you know this is just half scale of the back so by the time i do for the other one also that's going to be half a quarter plus quarter which is just half an inch that i've taken from the back and then if i had that half inch to the two and a half that i've taken from the front that's going to give me a total of three inches deduction and if i deduct that from my actual waist measurement that's 27 which is still fine for me i hope we understand this so now if you want to put a zipper at the back of this you just maintain this your line and then this is going to be your zipper allowance but for me i prefer to do a lacing there so that it will even help you to drag it and so for to create that lacing at the back at the center back here remember i said i'm going to be taking i'm going to be taking one one inch away from the back okay so i'll take one inch on the upper part i'll take one inch on the hem but on the waistline i'm going to be taking one inch i'll take one inch in addition to the quarter of an inch that i want to remove from here also so i'll take one inch and quarter here and then i'm going to connect this so please just pay attention to this it's very simple it's not difficult so this also is going to go off so the last thing to do at the back now is the waist the bask effect that we created okay so for that bask effect remember from our waist we came down by four and a half inches so here also i'm going to go down by four and a half and then i'm going to connect this to that point like that and now i can cut this out but before i cut it just like i did for the front i'm going to label this center back middle back and side back okay and then here i'm going to indicate that this is for is where it goes down which is the m line and then here you can indicate this at your the side where the center back is then here you note that this is where you had your center back and middle back too so just do something that will assist you in knowing this because especially the back may look very similar so now after doing this now i'm going to cut this out and then this part becomes your yoke that's if you're going to be adding a yoke to this so this upper part here becomes your yoke you can cut it on your net fabric or whatever fabric that you desire to use for this okay so now the next thing is to cut this out So after cutting this out now we'll go over and cut it out on our fabric remember we are not using a zipper for this so all this is going off okay this is going off and then we'll cut our bask waistline which i said is not compulsory depending on the shape that you're going for so this now is our back panel and then i'm just going to cut off all these dots that i have here so now we've reduced this waist okay we've reduced this waist from 30 to 27 inches which is fine if you want it to reduce more i have told us what we need to do but you need to be very careful so that it's not be too uncomfortable for the person that is going to wear this okay so now i'll take all this to my fabric now and then cut it out on the fabric so while cutting it on the fabric i would have half half inch around this so that remember there is a lot of joining going on here so i had half inch half inch 
for my joining and then here also i'm going to be adding half half inch for my hemming allowance and then for the side back i'll add half inch or one inch depending on how much allowance that you want to leave for your back on your side for joining because i do not have the same allowance for joining on this pattern so i'll do all that now and then bring it back so that we'll go over to the machine then after doing that i'm going to prepare my fabric by adding maybe air stay or gum stay depending on what you want to do i'll be adding a gum stay to this i'll use my arm to gum that stay to my fabric then after that we'll take it to the sewing machine and then we'll start to sew so these are the three patterns that i have for my back this is the center back this is the middle back and you can see it looks similar especially this and this that is why it is very important for you to label them and these are the patterns for the front so i'll go ahead and cut this now and then bring it back to continue okay so now i've cut it out on the fabric this is the center front the middle front and the side front so before i left i forgot to make sure that remember we did a basque effect which means we slanted it and then the that leg here may not be equal again so you need to measure to confirm what you have so you just measure what you have here and then check what you have here because this may tend to be longer than this you can see how slanted it came so you just need to blend that out because you are going to be sewing them together again so now this is the front and this is for the back so i'm using the same fabric for the lining and the main fabric so i just went ahead to cut four for each okay so two for this two sides then two for the lining so now i i also went ahead to add my gum stay to this you can use hair stay if you want and then for the cup area you can decide to double the stay that you're using for that part or you just go ahead to add a bra cup to it so now we'll go over to the machine to sew this now so it's very simple to sew basically what we are doing just like we labeled it so this is the center front the middle front and the side front i'm just going to be picking them one after the other then i'll be joining them together that is what we are doing so i just show us a little bit of it so that we will see a guide on how you can sew it easily okay so we are on the machine now and i've laid it out this is the center front the middle front and the side front so now i'm just going to remember there is a joining at the center front here so the first thing i'll do now is to join my center front together so i'll remove the pins now and then just take it together now and join it on the center front so i'm working with just the lining first uh, sorry the main fabric then i'll sew the lining later so i'll match it together i'll make sure they are equal and then i'm going to sew with half inch allowance so i forgot to make sure that i added half, half inch allowance then for this side i extended my allowance by one inch because i don't have the same allowance on the pattern before for others i just added half half inch allowance round so now i'm going to be showing by the half inch allowance that i have don't have power present so i just dabbed a gum on my stick that's why it's not staying together like that and my inverter cannot carry my iron okay so this is the center front now i've joined it together so the next thing now is to work on the middle front so the middle i'm just going to remove my paint and then i'll immediately set how it's going to be aligned so this is how it's going to be aligned you want to trim off this excess so that you have exactly your fabric and it will be easier for you to work with so I'm just trimming off the excess stay that I have there and after that I'm going to join it together okay so now that the stay is trimmed off I still have some here okay so now it's trimmed you can see this made two middle fronts so you just take the one that goes with each and then you sew it so i can try to sew from the upper part here because they are exactly each the same thing on both sides so i'm just going to pin it like that 
and then I'll start to sew. Now I'm sewing by half inch. Just look at it so you can see what we have here. You will just match each other and then you sew it. Okay, so these are the two side fronts and this is the bust area. So like I said, you can decide to double this bust area. You can tell it to double the stay or you just use a bra cut for it. So on the other side now, I'm going to do the side, second side also. And I'm going to sew from the upper part also. So because there is no light to so iron this stay, that's why it's looking this strong. Okay. So what you are doing now, just iron your stay, paper stay or gum stay or whatever stay that you decide to use. Iron it it very well before you start to sew. Just continue sewing this. I don't want this video to be too long. So I will just end it. So the same way we are sewing the the front is the same way we're going to be sewing the back also. Just lay it out. And then pick it one after the other, especially for the bag because they may look very similar. So you don't rush it, just take it one after the other and then you sew. So you can see the M also, it matches. So your M line have to match. Once you check it, just the way I explained. So now, we've done this also now. So we have our center front like this. So the next thing is to take the side front also. So this I noted this as the one that I'm the part that I'm sewing to the middle front. So I'll just remove the pins, and once I remove the pins, I'm just going to notice like this. So this goes with this, and this goes with this, and then I'll take it to the sewing machine now, and then I'm going to sew it. So that is how you join everything. Okay, so now I've sewn it and the two side fronts have been joined and this is what we have for the front okay so now we move over to the back and this is what the hem is looking like so you can see that they are all equal on the hem line so now we leave this now and move to the back so just the way i did center back middle back side back you just take them one after the other now and sew so in this case now i added one inch extra to my side back and then i noted this part that this is the part that i'm going to sew to my to my middle back so now i'll take it on after the other and sew because i don't want this video to be too long okay so now this is the center back the middle back and the side back so you just take it one after the other I'll take this and then the middle back. So no, you note this is the the part that will be laced. This is the part that will be joined to the middle back. So like I said, you just place, take it one after the other, put it back, and then you take this also put it back. Then you know you are joining this to this. So if you do it one after the other like that, you will not be confused because they look very similar to each other. So once you take it now, you take it straight to the machine and then you sew. Keep sewing it. Okay, so the center back and the side back have been joined now. This is the first one. So we have this now. So the next one now is to join the side, the last one, which is the side back to it. And this is the part that you're going to be joining to your to your middle back ok 
Okay, so this is one of the bags now. So now I'm just going to take my center front now and then add it to the side front. So that is how you do it. So the same thing that I've done here now, I'm going to repeat it for the other side of the bag. So I just want to take everything together so that I can do that off camera. So on the side, I'm just going to join the side by the one inch seam allowance that I left. Okay, so this is what I have. Now I'm going to do the rest of camera, then I'll join the other bag to it. Then we'll continue with the sewing. Okay, so once you are done joining the two, now this is what you have for the two. I can see the space that we have here is the one 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 inch. Remember, we took at the center back, we took one inch from the upper part, we took um, another one and a half on the on the waist area so now the next thing now is to hard bone into this corset so to hard bone into this you just need to open your your seam lines like this then you iron it really flat like i said i don't have power now so i'm just going to go ahead and just explain what we need to do so after opening this now then you iron it flat i'm going to be using this regular bone i can actually sew on it so you place your boning in between it like this. So for Victorian corset, I just like to add double bone instead of using one. I'm just going to be using two for it. So I'll just place one on this side of my seam allowance, and then I'll sew, and then I'll place another one. So I'm not going to be adding a full boning to this for the purpose of this tutorial, but I'm just going to show us one so that we will see what i'm talking about so this further gives structure to the victorian corset remember the reason why we're having this bony in the first place is to give structure to this corset so instead of just doing one i just leave half an inch upwards here to turn it and then i'll place my bony now and then i'll sew on it so you can actually sew on this bony but if you're not going to be using a sewable bony like this, if you're using a past plastic bony you can just create a channel for your bony so I've, i have a tutorial on several ways you can add bony to your corset already on the channel so you may want to check it out if you don't know what we are talking about so i'll be adding double bony to this so one will be here and the other one is going to be here okay and then on the center back also here you should add a bony to this because remember we're going to be lacing it and a lot of activity will be going on at the center back so you just want to place one bony at the center back here also so that it can strengthen that space and also it doesn't even have to remember we just divided our pattern to three pieces so it doesn't even have to be on the place where you have your dark lines alone if you want further structure you can start to just hard bony at any point in time even if you don't have a dark line there so now go ahead now and add this bony to this then we'll turn our corset and then we are done okay so this is the double bony that i was talking about you just wait on both sides of the bony to the same allowance that you have there and this is going to add further structuring for your corset okay so it depends on you you can decide to do one or you do two but this really works perfectly so i prefer it I'm using this black thread because my thread actually finished so you should use a matching color of thread for this okay so this is what we have now and then i'm just going to stop the boning here okay so this is what the corset 
channel look like by the time you finish sewing it like i said you should use a matching color of thread i just do something close but this is not the exact thread for this so now the next thing is to turn it like i said i'm not going to be hiding boning all through so i just showed us how it's supposed to be done so this is my lining and then i've sewn it the same way i sew my main fabric so the next thing now is to place my lining on my main fabric and then you pin it so these joints have to match so you can see see this you match all your joints together so this is the center front and this is the next one here so they just have to match each other like that to make your work easy so once they match you sew it on the upper part and then you match the lower part together also and then you sew before we now turn it okay so i'm gonna have to sew it on the upper part as you can see and also on the hemline then like i was explaining on this center back area you just had one or two only there just to straighten it so next thing now is to notch this and then from here i'm going to from this center back opening here i'm going to turn it out and then i'll give it a good press so on the upper part here for neatness when you're sewing it you can just sew in your hemming gum like this on the upper part so you add your hemming gum when you are sewing it then by the time you turn it and iron it the hemming gum will help to glue them together so that you can achieve a very perfect neckline there it will be really neat compared to any side of the lining or the main fabric poking out to just gum them together for you okay so this is the corset now i just had it with pins at the back because this is not the actual size then this is the boning effect that we did so you can see these bon two bonies just makes it it gives it this more structure and also is also beautiful as you can see so this is the basque effect that we have you can see it just curves from the waist all the way to the hem line so if you have want more you just need to extend the length here at the center front so that you can have more coffiness at that point and at this point i'm here to iron this you can see that it's wrong push so like i said there's no power so make sure you iron every step of the waist for a neater work and to also make your work easier I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, let us know in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.